Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. Hi everybody, <laughs> I'm here. I'm just trying to share it to my own page. Let's see if I can do that. Ooh, I might actually be able to do it. This technology sometimes gets the best of me. There we go. All right. And then hopefully I can see myself there. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hi, Diane. Rhoda. Hi, Kimberly. This light that I have here, it really goes in my glasses, but it's only for a few minutes while I'm, you know, waiting for everybody to hop on. I like to give it a good minute or two so that everybody can hop on there. Okay, good. I'm on this one. I'm on that one. Yay! It's a miracle. So I'm, I don't know if you can see my backdrop, but I'm in my basement. So um, it's really hard for me to do these at the store on Saturdays because it can get kind of busy in the afternoon and then the girls are leaving right when I'm kind of doing the end of it. And it's really distracting and now I live a long ways from my store so I thought you know I'm going to try and do this from home and test out our internet so I do have to mention that we live in the boondocks now like we're way out in the sticks and we have one internet provider and it's terrible service so if for some reason I lose you just refresh and then come back and I will start <laughs> right where I went left off because we, we do pretty well out here we're, we're pretty you know it's pretty good but we do have our moments so all right. Well, thank you everybody for hopping on. I really do appreciate it. So you guys have been having a good day. There's so many great projects and so many um, awesome presenters. And it's only just almost the end of day one. You still have a whole day tomorrow. I imagine your brains are all kind of like swimming because that's what happens to mine. Hey, Becky. Um, I, my brain starts going crazy like, oh, I could and I could and I could. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things. So. One of the things that might help you a little bit is make sure you've got a pad of paper and a pen or pencil or something like that. Um, and write little quick notes. Like if you've got something that you're watching and you're like, oh, I want to remember that, just write it down. You don't have to write like a whole long um, paragraph, just a little thing that might tweak you. That's how I try to remember things when I'm watching something because I don't want to, you know, miss what I'm doing, but I'll write like a little crib note kind of thing. So, or a bullet point or whatever you want to call it. So. There you go. Okay, so a few housekeeping things. Um, let's see, what can I start with? So I'm going to put this on the table, but you know, I'm old and I don't have all the great, you know, fancy things that like Neelay and all these others have. So I have a piece of paper. <laughs> so I'm going to put the piece of paper uh, when, I, when I turn the camera around so that you can see it. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so low tech. I really need to get this stuff. You know, I need to up my game. And I think I say that pretty much every time, right? But I never do. So I, I promise between now and the next one, I will try. Oh, good. Some of you are using notebooks. That's good. Yeah, just something that's kind of tweaks you so that you can remember. Sometimes I'll just like put down like a funny color combination, things like that. Anyway, so this weekend, if you want to do some shopping right up until Monday, um, like midnight, sort of our time here. We are going to offer you 20% off your entire order. Um, of course, we have a couple exceptions. Uh, our clearance page, our tools, because shipping kills me on the tools and they're heavy. And um, what else? Oh, kits. And um, the large spools of leather, because those are already really like about as low as I can go. So um, to uh, get the uh, deal, you're just going to type in the word Tucson because I wanted to keep it super simple. So just T-U-C-S-O-N and you'll get 20% off and you can do that multiple times. So if you go in today and you buy something and you think, oh gosh, I really wish that I had bought X, Y, Z, go back in, but make sure that you do a couple things. So the first is you wanna make sure that you um, put the coupon code in the coupon 
box and press the button and then you will see it. Sometimes it'll say this is not a valid coupon code, but then you'll actually see your discount there. So don't worry about it. If you see a discount, you're good to go. If for some reason it doesn't go through, just write it in the um, comment box. Like I tried like crazy, but your website's not working and I can't get it to work and we'll give you the discount. Also, if you put in more than one order, make sure that you write the second, um, in the second, um, sorry, let, let me rewind my lips. <laughs> make sure if you make a second order, that in the coupon box, no, in the comment box, <laughs> that you put, hey, this is my second order, please combine with the first one, and then we will refund your shipping, because I know the shipping stuff can get a little bit, um, you know, it can add up after a while. So there's that. And then also, if you place an order, make sure that you put down there that you were like, just put GBE or Great Beat Extravaganza or, or like, hey, I like Kelly's show or whatever you want to put, just so that we know that you actually watch the show because I'm going to give away three $25 um, sort of like gift certificates to my uh, online store. And so I will pick those probably sometime next week. And then... Um, the other thing that I'm going to do today, so I hope enough people are on, but I'll try to remember um, to mention this as we go along, that um, I want everybody to leave a comment. You don't have to do it right now, but sometime between now and when I'm done, um, leave a comment and tell me in the comment uh, section below, like on this video, not in, my, not in your order, but in this com uh, comment section, tell me what color you think of when you think of Tucson. Just pick a color that you think reminds you of Tucson. And then um, that'll, we'll, we'll choose from all those entries and we're gonna give away some free kits. So you have, you don't have to place a, a, an order to win something. You can win on our, our uh, show today just by uh, leaving a color of what reminds you of Tucson. And then if you place an order, you can win one of the $25 um, gift certificates. And you can also win the huge uh, giveaway that, um, that, well, we've given everything to Candy. She's the one that mails everything out. And that sucker is full. We were <laughs> we were saying last night it looked like a, a bead baby because she was holding on to this big bag full of all kinds of stuff. So, all right. So that is some of the, um, the housekeeping stuff. So Tucson is your coupon code for 20% off. Leave me a color that reminds you of Tucson and make sure that you put down GBE in your comment section in your order so that we can add you to the list of people that could win. And I think that was all of the housekeeping stuff. So I, I have a really great project today and I have lots of kits left. Um, I went crazy and, and really bought because everybody always, com not complains, I hate to use the word complains. Um, people are, are disappointed, that's a better way of saying it, that when they don't get their kits. So there's quite a few left. So um, if you're loving the um, results here today, you can still pick up a kit. And also if I don't blab too much, then um, I'm going to have a kit at the end, not a kit, yeah, it's a kit, but it's a, just a little project. So I'm not gonna tell you anything about that until the end, so I need to stop yapping so that we can get on that. But I just wanna have a short slurp. So cheers to everybody. It's Saturday, uh, four o'clock here in uh, downtown Mission, British Columbia. It's pouring rain and my dog just puked all over the deck and I don't have any way of cleaning it up because we just moved into this house and there's no water up there. So I had to go get big buckets of hot water and throw them at it so that the bar barf just jumped off. Isn't that great? I <laughs> love living out here. <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's always something like five seconds before I'm about to do this. I hear her up there, you know. <laughs> oh my God. It's always something in my life. You never know what it's going to be, but there's always something. But that's what makes me way more interesting, right? <laughs> hey, Sophie. Yeah, all kinds of people here today. All right, so do you guys wanna see what we're doing or you just wanna hear me talk about my silly dog barfing? <laughs> hey, this light makes me look good today. I'm, I fluffed up my hair and put, I even put on mascara for you guys because I never wear mascara anymore because I don't care. So purple mountains at sunset, ooh, that sounds nice. All right, hey Lorena. Okay, so I'm going to, um, you know, my, my low tech stuff here. I have some notes, so let's see um, what, oh, hey, you know what I never said, just in case you don't know, um, I'm Kelly, and I own Kelly's Bee Boutique, and if you're looking for some really great stuff, go to www.kellyspeedboutique.com. Just make sure you spell Kelly with an I-E, okay? <laughs> um, also, uh, one little thing, if you do place an order, Monday is a holiday here, 
So although Carmen has been at the store today filling any of the orders that are starting to come in, it's probably going to be a little bit bonkers on Tuesday. So we will do our very best to get them out as soon as possible. You know us, we try really, really hard and we do get them out really quickly. But just a little, you know, FYI. And also the postal system sucks. So if your order's late, it's the postal system on us. It's been terrible. Whether it's in Canada or the US, it's been terrible lately. Um, okay, so I think, I think that's about it. So I'm really excited to get this started. This is one of my favorite techniques. I absolutely love knotting. And of course, I'm gonna do some barrel knots. So we're going to do a bunch of the things that I really love to do, so. Uh, yes, Jeanette, I was really happy that she, she has a warning signal. She, she like dry heaves for quite a while. She's a big Labradoodle, she's a real sweetheart. But now you'd never know, she's running around like a lunatic. But she's got, because she's a Labradoodle, she's, you know, part poodle. And poodles have sour tummies sometimes, that's what they told us. And she just, um, you know, throws up a lot. It's just her thing, so. Okay, so I'm going to take this off of one thing and put it on the other and hope for the best. So sorry for the jiggles. Oh, that's right, it is, isn't it, Brooke? It's, um, what is it, Flag Day or, no, President's Day? or something. I know it's a, it's a holiday in the United States. All right, let's get this all. I know because my mailing guy is not open. So I have to figure out where to move this, which direction. Oh, look at that. That looks pretty good, I think. We can almost, I think we can pretty much see, can't we? Oops, all right, I'm just trying to move that over. How's that looking? My arm's in the way. Well, close enough. I think that's a pretty good, right? President's Day, okay. So is that like a, um, a nationwide holiday? Is it everybody gets that day? Because here, uh, this is our, called our family day. It was just a, you know, people were finding that um, you get partway through February and you have the doldrums. And uh, <laughs> so they've made it the holiday so that people can, you know, spend some time with their family. So. All right, okay, I'm just looking at some of the, oh, it's a federal holiday, okay. So I've got all of our stuff here and I'm gonna kind of go through everything. So the tools that we're gonna be using today, is uh, we've got some cutters and, or you can use a pair of scissors. So either or on this, well actually probably both would be a good idea, but you know, I love my Softlex. I wish they still made these. These are my favorite ones and no, they, you can't get them anymore. Uh, people ask me all the time, what can I use like yours? And the closest that is uh, to these are the Tronics. I don't carry them because of the exchange rate. It makes them so unaffordable um, to, for me to carry. But I think the Tronics would be the closest one to that. So, okay. We're also going to be using round nose pliers and our bent chain nose pliers and our regular pliers. And we're gonna be using um, some of the long nose, I mean, I guess you could use any kind, but I like these long uh, tweezers. We do have them on our website, and I'll try to make sure after, unless um, I have a Vanna on here, maybe Jennifer can do them. <laughs> Jennifer sometimes is my Vanna. Um, we do carry these, and I think they're only like $3.99, and they are invaluable. Not only are they great for uh, doing the knotting, but it got a sliver out of my little grandbaby's um, fingers the other day. So, you know, they're great, multi-tools. Multi, multi Okay, so that's for the tools. We may use a thread zapper if I get around to that later. And of course, we're gonna be using one of our barrel knot tubes. And if you buy this kit, there's a little, the kit, um, our insert. If you buy one of these kits, you will get one of these in there. Anytime I do a kit where you make a barrel knot, you will get one of these. So I imagine Jennifer probably has about 150 of them now, right? <laughs> She buys so many of my kits, which I really do appreciate. Oh, I'm getting some history on the President's Day. Thank you. Okay, and then we're going to be using a little bit of GS Hypo. I'm kind of like a squirrel all over the place. I'm trying to uh, do this and read the comments. So, okay. And now for our parts today, we have got some Eslon cording. And I think this was about... I think we cut, what was that, about 22 inches or something like that. I honestly can't remember, but that's just S-long cording. And then I've got a little piece about uh, 10 or 12 inches of two millimeter leather. And then I have uh, 10 inches of our vegan suede. And I know, yeah, people say, well, you know, it can't be vegan, but okay, it's just, it's not made from an animal. So there you go. And <laughs> For our parts, we're gonna be using some check glass. And this one is, um, I love both of the colors. You guys know how much I love this color combination here. This uh, sea green and the sort of almondy color. I love that. But you know what? 
I absolutely love this color combination that I'm going to be making today. I'm going to make this one for myself. So we've got uh, three of these. I can't remember what the color name is, but it's got a silver and an opaque white and then the Picasso finish on it. Fabulous. And then a really pretty sort of caramely brown one. And then some little accent faceted um, fire polish. And then we're going to need a couple head pins in your kit. You always get at least one extra one because, you know, sometimes they don't work and that uh, that's just, you know, so we try to help you out. And of course, everything is pretty much Tierra cast because I love them. And we're going to be using one of their, a couple of their sort of small textured rings. I think, what are these? Are these from the Jard Jardin series? I can't remember. And then one of their beautiful buttons and a nice little uh, charm. And we've got one of their cord ends. And I'm also going to be using these, um, what are these things called? Somebody help me quick, quick, quick. What are they? Those are crimp covers, not covers, not crimp covers. They're called something else. They are clamshells. That's what they're called. But these are a unique one that goes sideways. So we'll be using those. And then I have a couple different size um, of jump rings. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I need to have a short slurp here because I'm very thirsty. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I owe you. You're such a big help. And yes, we ship everywhere pretty much. We ship to all over to the States. Um, if you uh, place an order over $100, it's free shipping. All right, so let's get started. So I have to figure out what I'm going to start with first because I just, you know, I made this quite a while ago. So let's start with our knotting part of it. So you're gonna get your Eslon and it's gonna come in one long piece. And to make life easier, we're just gonna cut it. You don't have to. Um, sorry, I, I always hate crashing around with all these tools, but that's life. It's gonna make a little noise there, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna give that a little snip. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the very end here and I'm gonna wrap it around my finger and make a knot. So I'm just making a little knot, just a regular overhand knot. And I'm gonna put those tails up inside it there and just tighten up. Okay, and if um, anybody asks a question and I don't see it, um, maybe somebody can jump in if you know the answer. It's really hard for me to go back on these to answer questions because um, Facebook will only let you answer the first thousand or 500 or something like that. So often they get, they get missed. So I'm not ignoring anybody. It's just really, really hard to get back and answer all the um, questions, but I really do appreciate all of them. Okay, so we've got one knot here, but I want to bulk that up a little bit. So I'm going to make one more. And I'm just going to place that right over top of the first one. So I just kind of guide it with my fingers. And then I want to grab hold of a pair of pliers. And I'm going to really pull that down. So you can also use your tweezers to run that down and give it a good tug. <coughs> Excuse me, a good tug because we want to try to make that a little bit bulkier, but we need it small enough that it's going to fit through the um, our little uh, clamshell there. Okay, so I'm going to give this a little trim. So I'm just going to kind of cut that down a bit. Now, if you don't have a thread zapper, you could use a, um, a lighter, but those always scare me. So I'm going to use a thread zapper. Now, this is just a really simple tool. It just puts uh, a single battery in there. We do have a few left. If you, uh, they're on the website, just type in thread zap. And um, if you do buy one of these, make sure you put in a fresh battery. It just uses a double A, but make sure it's fresh, not one that you find in the back of your drawer, because that's when they don't work. Uh, but there's not much that can go wrong with this. I've had this one probably for 12 years, 14 years, something like that. So all you do is you hold that button down and then you'll see the end starts to get kind of red and you probably can't see on camera there, but, and then I just kind of tap the end and then just kind of push it down. Now, if you don't have one of those and you don't have a lighter, just use a little dab of GS Hypo Cement on there or whatever glue you have, okay? So yeah, I love the thread zapper. I use it for everything. Now it doesn't use, it only works on synthetics. It, so you can't use it on cotton and that sort of thing. Okay, so now we're going to put on our little uh, clamshell. So all I do is just sandwich that in between and just close with my fingers. It's that easy. So now what you've got is you're not encased, but you can't see it. Isn't that fabulous? So the only thing you want to make sure is that, that uh, those two pieces on the top are lined up. If they're offset a little bit, 
um, you'll have a harder time getting a jump ring through there. So you can always just take something like a head pin and put it in there and kind of pull them around to try to get them lined up. You can use your, um, your uh, pliers and just kind of push it around. You have to be careful that you don't flatten this at all. Okay, so, oh, thank you very much, uh, Jenny, for being my Vanna on that. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna start doing some knotting. So this is the way I knot. If you know a different way to knot, then you do the way that you know, but this is the way that I have sort of figured works best for me. And I'm just gonna move some of this stuff so that you're actually just seeing me knot and nothing else. So the way that I knot is I take my material and I place it in front of my fingers like this. I pull around and I cross it over like that. And then I reach through. And now you can see I've made a knot on my fingers. So basically, if I flip it like that, you can see there's a knot. So now what I wanna do is take these tweezers and I'm gonna come through that loop. I know it's a little awkward here, so I'm gonna kinda of go in a weird um, angle. So I go through that loop and then I drop down where I want that knot to be. So now I can let it drop. And you always wanna make sure that you're sort of tilting it or dropping to the right, because otherwise it's gonna fall off and then you're gonna lose your knot. So I just tighten that up and that didn't work, did it? <laughs> you know, live, anything live is, there's always uh, something bound to go wrong. It kind of worked, but not really. I think it was that weird angle that I was on. So I'm just gonna pull that apart and try again. See us, even, even the presenters make errors and stuff like that. So I gotta, I gotta stick with my, what I know, you know, not going on a weird angle. So just make your little loop, go in there, make sure you've got all of it. Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it so you can see. So you wanna take your tweezers, go through that, make sure that that is over top. I'm making this look way harder than it is because it's not wanting to cooperate. There we go. And then you just pull up. There we go, now I've got a knot. So that's what you're trying to do is create a knot on top of the tweezers. And then you pull nice and tight and then I pull it off and I run my tweezers down and there we go. That's created a nice little knot there. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Now, this I have found is pretty easy to get through here, but I know today because I'm live, it's probably gonna, I'm gonna struggle with at least one bead. If you have a big eye needle or a collapsible eye needle, um, you can always use that if you're struggling trying to get your Eslon through the bead. Um, I did on one of my, um, one of these samples, just one bead, it wouldn't go through. So I just grabbed um, a needle and I don't have one out here. So I'm hoping I don't have any problems today. Okay, so now we're gonna make another knot. So I just go around my fingers and I don't know why, but I always find it's easier when I create a bit of an X because then it actually creates that knot. So pull those through, take your tweezers, go through that loop, and then you take the end of the tweezers and I put it on and then I'll tip it up and put it right where you want that knot. So now you can see there is a knot here. See the knot? And then I'm gonna pull these up and there we go, just pull that down. And then I run my tweezers down and I tighten up that knot. So now we have that knotted on each side. So I just wanna make sure that I am going um, to um, back and forth on these beads and um, alternating the different ones. Okay, so I have two different colors. So I've got that beautiful silver and sort of gold or whatever that is on there. <laughs> it's, it's such a pretty one. Okay, I'm just gonna read a couple things while I have a short slurp here. What size is the S line? It is the smallest one. It's the point four, I think, or? I honestly don't even know. I just buy the smallest one because I like it. What color is this one? Uh, I don't know. I think this one is bronze on here. There's, we have about, I don't know, 60 colors, I think. We have quite a few. Okay, so, and you see for a change, I didn't waste a lot of product. Normally I give you guys like, you know, three feet of it or something silly like that. And I thought, no, we don't need to do that. Let's just give you guys what you need. So I'm trying to learn to um, not be wasteful. It's not, it's not really something that I'm good at when it comes to parts. Okay, so this is one of the ones that's going to give me some grief. So sometimes what I end up doing is, um, and I knew I should have grabbed myself a needle, but... Sometimes what you can do um, is you can take a little bit of glue and you can stiffen the ends of these up. And I actually had meant to do that. 
I'm going to just trim this. You know, there's nothing like live TV when it's, not, or not TV, but you know what I mean. Live when uh, something's not going to work. So, because each one of these holes are drilled a little differently. And honestly, they do go through. But now I would have, I would have included um, a needle in each one of these. But I thought, well, they're going to end up um, poking out. So, of the kit. Oh, my goodness. I'll get this in there. I'm just going to pull that off to the side. And I'm going to stick it in my mouth. <laughs> and get it wet and covered in um, lipstick and if that doesn't work I know it does work because I've made a bunch of these but you know it's just live so I'm not going to sit and struggle with this I'm just going to put it on the other side of that just for now just because it's easier than sitting having me be here getting frustrated so I'm just going to run it on the outside but I would recommend having a needle around to try to um, get that in there if you do struggle but for me right now I'm just putting it on the outside so that I don't lose my mind because it's a short walk so <laughs> oh lord love a duck I am really not having much luck here at all all right there we go so see even when I know it's on the outside it actually doesn't even look bad like that so if you had to do that for some reason you know it's not the worst thing in the world but um, I'm just trying to make myself feel better <laughs> see that one goes in fine there's always one that doesn't go in and it's very frustrating and I never know why so if I was um, doing this not on a live presentation I would definitely try and search through my um, needles I've got a whole pile of needles sitting right in front of me but nothing that Eslon would go through so okay so you, you just want to make sure that those are nice and snug that there's no gaps you don't want to have any um, other thread you just want to see your knots on there okay so this is such a simple technique you cannot get much more simple I just make it look difficult because I can't get it through see now look at that one goes through like a charm so what I'm going to do because this is mine um, I I may leave that because it, you can't even really tell but I you could go back I could go back later and redo it so <laughs> thanks Lorena <laughs> Hello from California. Whereabouts in California are you from? Okay, so there we go. There is our last knot. You see how quickly that went together? So now we have a nice little row of knots. Now this has, this one is a little off because it's pushing down with that one on there, but you know, it's, just, it's not so bad, right? Oceanside, I have no idea where that is. I'm assuming from an, by clo close to an ocean. <laughs> Hello from Arizona. Okay, so now we need to put on our other clamshell. So this is where it can get just a little bit tricky, but it's not really super tricky, okay? This kit is called the Beth Bracelet. So if you, um, if you go into our website and you go to the search bar, just type in the word Beth and two things will pop up. One will be an Elizabeth necklace, which is also fabulous, or the Beth Bracelet. And you wanna know why I named this Beth? I was trying to come up with something that sounded a bit southwestern and I couldn't come up with anything but when I got on that train of thinking about southwest kind of stuff what I thought of was um, Yellowstone the show and I love Beth she's she's kind of a badass but I love her and so this is named after her so <laughs> if you've never watched that show it can be a little, she's a little feisty but I do love her okay so now we have to put this other one on so I'm going to make one more knot but now, okay, so we've got our, our, our last knot here, but I need to create another knot right about where my fingernail is. So I'm going to create that loop and I wanna put my tweezers right where I want the knot. I need to leave a little bit of a gap so that we can get that on there. So I don't wanna put that knot right on top of the first one or, that, or the last one there, I guess it is. So I wanna get that nice and tight, but I'll show you what I do. I pull that tight that way, but then I also pull it upwards a little bit just to create that little tiny you see that little tiny bit of a gap and then I'm going to do my second knot right on top of it so I go around my fingers pull that through now I'm going to take my tweezers and put it right on top of that knot so I'm right on that second knot and then I'm going to tighten that up and sometimes you just have to hold your tongue the right way and of course because again because I'm doing this on live you know it's not uh, always working out today 
but I just use my tweezers like that, reopen it back up. I'm just going to re-knot that one just because I don't want it to kind of go south. Okay, so go around my fingers, pull that through. Now take your tweezers and place it right where you want that. So I want it right on top of that last knot that I just made and then pull down. There we go. Sometimes, you know, you have to do things a couple times and then pull down. Now on this one, I would, I'm going to trim it and I'm going to burn it down again, but I would put a little bit of glue on there too, just because this is our final knot and uh, I don't want it to go anywhere. I'm not going to put any glue on because, you know, the glue just kind of gets in the way when I'm trying to let it dry. Um, so that looks like heck right now. It's a big mess. But the magic of this lovely little thing is you just pop that inside there and close it up and it covers up all that mess. So just put a little dab of glue on there just so that that is um, uh, not going to, it, it won't come undone. But you know, I like to make sure things aren't going to come down or sorry, come undone. So there's our one uh, little section there that I've created. Yeah, you can always rewatch this, Darlene. It'll be on, uh, I'm going to put it up on YouTube and it'll be on our Facebook and my Facebook and it'll, it'll be everywhere. So that's the good thing about uh, doing these is that you can always go back and watch it. All right, so now we've created this little part. I'm going to create an, another little section. So I'm going to open up a jump ring here. Now this is a six millimeter jump ring and it's an 18 gauge. So what I'm going to do is, I got to switch my hands. I'm such a creature of habit. I have to use this tool in my right hand because I took my um, the little spring out so I kind of use it a bit like a hairdresser but I can't do it with my left hand so and why did I do that I just found it easier all right so I'm going to open up my jump ring and I'm going to go like that bend away and then I'm going to put it through the end of this little clamshell and sometimes you have to just kind of get it lined up the right way because we're trying to put something that is round through something that's straight and it can be a little challenging all right and now we're going to put through uh, one of our little rings and do that up and just jiggle back and forth a little bit there we go am I staying on camera this time so <laughs> I'm all I'm always worried that I'm off camera and I'm trying so hard how am I doing this? I'm going to wait a second while I, I and see if I am on camera. Yeah, I look like I am there. Okay, good. All right. Okay. See so lots of um, thumbs up and hearts and stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a little clasp on the end and we're going to be using our knotting tool and we're going to be using our leather. So I am going to take my leather and run it through and I'm not so worried about which way this goes because you know both sides of these are equally as pretty so if you really want to make sure that one side is up you could try and figure out how to make that happen but I never worry because look at that one looks just as pretty as that one so really it doesn't matter so what I want to do is pop that through and I am going to put my long one on the top now the one on the bottom I only need as long as I need my clasp to be so that's going to be about um, maybe a good two inches okay so the rest of it you're going to leave at the top because that's what we're going to be knotting with so I am going to take my uh, tube and I'm going to put it in between these two pieces of leather and that's how we're going to create our knot so you kind of have to ho have a few things you know it underneath your thumb there so now I want to take this one that is furthest away from me and I'm going to bring it underneath and I'm going to be working towards my left hand so I'm going to go once twice three times and then with that same long piece I'm going to go through the back end of that tube pull it out and then take that tube off and now I'm going to pull that same one so now what I do is I just kind of put my thumb right here because I don't want to push that knot too close to that ring I want that to be about there so I find if I kind of guide it with my thumbnail like I'm pushing that knot against my thumbnail so that it doesn't get jammed up there. If you made that too tight, it's going to wiggle back and forth and eventually um, wear through. So you want to make sure that it's got a little bit of give there. Okay. So now we've got another, um, the rest of this long piece here, and then we've got this part here. So all of these are going to remain the same size. What we want to do is make sure that this 
um, button can fit through there. So I can I kind of know because I've made so many of them, but what you can do is just take it and place it in between here and then sort of mentally mark with your you know thumb or whatever you want to use. And we know that we have to make our buttonhole at least that big. So I'm going to repeat the above or the before, the one I did before. <laughs> Uh, you know, I always looked forward to getting older and, and then now it's happened and I've lost my brain cells. <laughs> it's not that much fun. All right, so we're gonna repeat. We're gonna go once, twice, three times. And you can see that that one wanted to jump over so I pulled it back and bossed it around and made it go where I wanted it to go. So now you're gonna only have just enough to get through the back end there. Again, I'm trying not to be wasteful. so. You might have to pull that off and then pull out like that. Okay, so now what I like to do is again put my thumbnail there and this can take a little bit of maneuvering but before I tighten it up I want to make sure I can get that button through. Now the key to making a loop or a hole or whatever for the button is to make sure that it slips through but that it's not too big because if it's too big um, it'll just loosen up and you'll end up, you know, you could lose your bracelet. Uh, leather does stretch a little bit, so in time, and with using this back and forth, you know, taking it on, taking it off, it will um, loosen up. Now, when I tighten this, I'm so I'm pulling that way, but you can see what happens. This one pulls up at the same time. So we want to make sure that we're tightening up and not making it bulge inside there. And so I'm taking the short one and pulling it tight. And now we can see that we can get that through there nicely. That goes through perfectly. And then I'm going to now trim off the ends and you can trim them off wherever you want. I'm just going to trim them off like that. And then again, I'm not gonna use any glue cause it just makes a mess all over everything, but, or maybe, I don't know, I'm not gonna bother. So let's pretend that my head pin is glue. So what I'm gonna do is take a bunch of glue and put it right here on those knots or that area of the knot, because that's right where it is um, actually the mechanical part of it that's the making it a knot. So you want to put some there. And then right here, I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there, so at the where the knot starts. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put a little bit of glue here, and then I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. And then let it dry. Um, this will dry nice and clear. You'll never see it, but now you've got a nice secure um, knot and that makes a really cute uh, little ending for your bracelet. How am I doing for time? I'm actually doing pretty good with all my gabbing. All right, I just gotta get rid of something that popped up on my computer screen here. Get rid of that. All right, okay, thank you. Um, yes, oh, thank you so much, Jennifer. You're being a very good Vanna today. I really do appreciate it. I, I need help. We all need help when we're doing these things because there's, there's lots of moving parts. Okay, so now I want to put on my little charm and I'm going to put some dangles in there. So I am going to take another one of my six millimeter 18 gauge jump rings and I'm going to open that up. Now you'll often see me use smaller ones, but on this one I'm using a little bit bigger because these rings are just a little bit bigger and those small jump rings that I love are hard to get over there. So when you do these up, make sure you jiggle back and forth until it kind of locks in there. So now we have that on there, and now we're gonna create our little um, links that go in there. And I probably should have made them first because now I think I'm gonna have to open that up, but you know, let's do everything backwards today. Okay, so I'm just gonna place one of my um, fire polish. So this is a four millimeter one, and we are going to, I think I'm just gonna bend away. So just kind of bend away, and then we're gonna do a wrapped loop. So I don't need a very big wrap loop, so I'm gonna to go towards the end of my round nose pliers, and go up and over and straight down. And now I'm gonna open up and rotate, and then I'm going to create my loop. And then you just wanna make sure that that looks like a little bit of a, not, not really a stop sign, but like a, you know, a lollipop. Let's go with that. So now to save myself from having to open this up again, I'm just going to add it. Um, into that jump ring. If you uh, want to do it the other way around, you can make these first and then add them all with your jump ring. It, it doesn't really matter. I just jumped the gun there. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap these up. So I'm just going to wrap a couple times and then cut that off. So I'm not doing a messy wrap today. I'm just kind of doing a small little wrap, just a couple little wraps around. And then be really careful when you 
uh, put down, push down the burrs. You can see that I kind of tilt my tool a little bit this way versus over this way because you could crack your bead because those beads are glass. So now we're going to put on our little tiny three millimeter and repeat with, with the uh, same technique. Just bend that away and I just use my nail to kind of bend it. And then we're going to go up and over and down and then do our little wrap. Now these head pins are super strong. So they can be um, a little challenging to work with. So if you've got hands that don't um, do well with um, you know, heavy gauges and things like that, you could always wrap with your tool. So the way that I do that is I grab hold of this part really nice and snugly, and then I take the end of my tool to the end of my wire and I pull it around. And then you always wanna let go and then pull it around and then let go. So don't wrap it around the tool. So I'm just wrapping that a couple times. I don't want really long necks on these, so that's why um, I'm only doing a couple wraps. So just kind of push that down. And again, be really mindful that you're not gonna um, break your bead. So what you can do if you're getting too close like that is just grab hold of it. And there we go, we can push that down. And then we're not gonna worry about damaging our bead at all. So I'm just gonna lay this down and show you what we got happening so far. So here you go, we've got our beautiful beaded section with our nice little embellishment and we have our um, clasp on the end. Okay, so that's what we've got going. Sorry, I just have to get rid of something else here. Oh, thank you so much, Kimberly, for uh, explaining that. Yeah, I have um, about 200 videos on YouTube and if you go on there, you'll be able to see some of the um, things that I've created and I've got so many technique videos. They're, I think, pretty darn good. So. Pop onto my YouTube page and um, we can you can see all sorts of things. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the other side of the bracelet. So I am going to put on another one of the larger jump rings. And then I am going to open that up. There's something weird on my thing there. And just put it through the little loops on the end and then pop it on the ring there. And now you gotta make sure you open it up enough these are pretty skookum rings. I love them. This is one of my favorite uh, lines from Tierra Cast. I did get their some of their new ones. I'm just waiting for them to come in. So I've got some of their uh, Western inspired, I guess it was. All right, so that's what we've got happening here. Now, here's, here's the only sort of, I would say, complicated part of this whole process. So I actually did, I'm going to excuse my hand there. I actually did some measurements so that I can help you figure out so what we're gonna be doing here is adding our, our vegan suede on the end. Now, when you add this, like this is gonna remain a constant. So these ones here, this length is gonna remain a constant. The only thing that you can really adjust in the size is this vegan suede. So I'm going to sort of explain how you can adjust that. So what we wanna do is marry up the two ends so that they're, um, meeting they don't have to like if it's not exact exact don't worry about it but we want to have it pretty close now I'm going to take this little ring and I'm going to pop this down inside and we're just creating a lark's head knot so we're pushing that down inside and then you just pull this up and then put these down inside that little loop there and then I'm gonna pull tight. And I wanna make sure when I'm pulling this snug that nothing is like, that. there's no um, twist or anything like that. So be mindful that it's not twisting. And what I do is I kind of do a push and a pull thing and that creates that really lovely looking lark's head knot. And I, I, I really love that. It's such a simple little knot, but it just creates a nice sort of finish. So then we have to figure out where we want to put our end cap. So here's some of the measurements that I did. Again, you can come back to this. Um, I, this will be, uh, rec it's recorded, so you can come back for the sizing if you don't remember right now. So I'm gonna get out my little ruler here. So what I figured out, because I made a whole pile of these so that I could get this right, is if you take this ring and place it right at the zero mark. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak in um, um, imperial measure, not metric, because I know the metric can really confuse people. Um, so if you put that right where the zero is, and then you measure up two and a half inches, that's gonna give you a wrist size of somewhere around six and a quarter to six and a half. 
If I go up to about three inches on there, that's going to give you a wrist size from about six and three quarters to seven inches. So it depends. Everybody has a different wrist size, so I can't tell you exactly where to cut it. It just depends on your wrist. Now I have a wrist that's about seven and a half. So if I go up just shy of three and a half, so I did one that was about three and a half and it was just a little bit big for me. So I'm going to go back just a smidge and that's where I'm going to cut that. So I'm going to place that ring right at the zero and then I'm going to go up to just under three and a half and I'm going to give that a trim. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that they're even. So I'm just going to run my fingers down, make sure that they're even. They are there. And then I'm going to try one more time because once you put that end on, you can't really do much about it. Okay, so that's just shy. I'm just going to trim off this one a little bit. No, oh, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm just going to trim off a smidge, just a little tiny bit. Okay, so now I'm just going to get rid of my thing there. So one of the things that you should do is you should dry fit this. You should, uh, what I do is I place them on top of each other. I just kind of see how like they're side by side, but when I put them in, I kind of place them on top of each other. I take my little end um, cap and or cord end, whatever we're going to call that, and then I'm sort of separating it with my thumb when it's in there. And I just want to make sure that that fits in there. If for some reason it doesn't, you could come in and trim off like the edges of this, but I've never had a problem. So I find the best way to do it is to stack them and then you can get that in there nice and easily. And then I sort of separate them a bit. So I'll lay that down so you can see. So it will be slightly uh, overlapping there, but just ever so slightly. And if you want to make a size eight, I would just do it a little bit bigger, like maybe three and three quarters or something. So what I, one of the things that I did do, and you could do this with yours if you have a larger wrist or if you have a really small wrist, is you can do it at this stage and then you just have to be really careful. We're not going to um, squish that down. You can kind of put it around your wrist and kind of get an, you know, kind of an eyeball. That's what I did for, for measuring. I figured out, okay, well, how am I going to do this? So I just kind of measured them and went backwards. Um, so that's, that's another little trick that you can do. But for now, that's how we're going to do this. So you can see all the, the different sizes. There's a little bit smaller. Oh my goodness, it's hailing like crazy out there. <laughs> if you can, I wonder if you guys can hear that. Holy smokes. So you can see there's the three different sizes, okay? All right, so now you can, if you don't like to um, smooch these down, is that going to be my technical term for the day? If you don't want to crush these down, you can glue them on. But the nice thing about these cord ends is that you can um, squish them. So before I squish them, I just want to make sure that that's pushed up inside there nicely. And then I am going to turn it on both sides and give it a good squish. Now you don't want to squish up here because that'll change the shape of the, the neck and we don't want to do that. If this makes you fearful, you think, oh my gosh, it could come off, glue and crunch it down or squish it down or whatever we're going to call that. So it's up to you. It's your piece. You can kind of do whatever. I don't mind it squished down like that. It is a whole lot prettier when it's not. So if you want, you can just glue it. If you use something like a GS Hypo Cement on there, it's going to take 24 hours to cure. If you use anything else, make sure, like if you're using um, Super New Glue or um, if you're using um, like a Loctite, that you get it on there and get it in fast because that will make the um, uh, suede swell up a little bit. Okay, so now that's the hardest part done. So now we're going to put on our um, button. So I'm going to take three of these small jump rings. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to add three uh, jump rings on when I'm doing my buttons. And that's because if you just put one on, if I was to just put on one there, when you're trying to maneuver it around, you have no neck there. And by adding extra jump rings, it gives you a bit more of what I like to call a neck. So it doesn't matter so, quite so much on this particular bracelet, but on some of them, if you only um, put one in, you'll see that it just really, you'll struggle to get it um, on. So make sure you've always got a, a little bit of a flexible neck and you'll find it's a lot easier. 
Yeah, another trick is um, we'll give you, a, I think, a one or two extra jump rings. If you kind of, you know, make a mistake and you don't make this long enough, you can add a couple extra jump rings on this end and then you can um, get your length a little bit longer. So that's a little trick for um, if you kind of mess up and make that a little bit too short. Okay, so let me get rid of some of this stuff here. And then I will show you both of the bracelets, even though I'm sure you've seen most of them. And then I think I have time to do that other little uh, project. So there you go. So that's the one color. And then here's the other. This is the, um, oops, let's see which way does that go. That goes that way. And that one goes that way too. All right, so there's the beautiful sea, uh, sea green and then the uh, one with the silver in it. Now, the way that I like to wear them is I like to wear it with the beads on the top. And of course, I'm trying to put this on my right hand with my left hand, which probably, uh, can I get it on there? I'm not very dexterous anymore. I used to be, but let's see. All right, okay, so that's the way I like to wear it. Um, so that you've got the beads on the top and the sort of business end on the side and then your dangles right there. So I think I have that, might, might have that on. Oh no, that's the right way. Okay, so there you go, that's the finished piece. So I just love this one. I think it was really, really cute and it's super fun to make and I think it's pretty affordable too for what you get because that is, uh, you know, lots of, lots of moving parts on there. So if you like that one, make sure to give me a big um, thumbs up or some hearts because I really tried hard on this one to make it something that I thought everybody would really like. So I hope you enjoyed that part. Alrighty. Can I have another short slurp here? Okay, so I have a cute little project here. Thanks everybody. I had a slow start there with a few things that were um, going wrong. But, um, okay, now I know I wrote this down. Oh, it's on my piece of paper that's over there. Okay, I will have to remember. Okay, so I am going to be um, doing something that I never really do. But I was on, uh, uh, Instagram, I think it was the other day, maybe last week, and Tierra Cast posted a picture of a, a pair of earrings that my eyes literally like widened. I went, oh my goodness, those are the prettiest earrings I have ever seen. They were absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And what I loved about them is that she used lentil beads, and we've had these lentil beads sitting there forever, and I didn't know what to do with them. So I am going to do a shameless ripoff, but I am going to totally give Carol her props. And, get, and she completely came up with these. I had nothing to do with them. I'm just going to replicate them and show you what a beautiful job Carol did. So if you want to have a look at some of her jewelry, she's on Instagram and it's Carol Carmen Jewelry. And uh, she does beautiful stuff, um, a lot of bead weaving. And I'm sure you could actually buy these from her already made up. Um, and I hope that she's okay with me completely ripping off her design, but I'm giving her credit and I hope that's good um, because these are just absolutely stunning. So uh, kudos to you, Carol, if you ever see this, you did a beautiful job. All right, so I have eight minutes to do these. So we have an ear wire. We have one of these Tierra cast stitch arounds, and then we have a small lentil bead, which just sits in there perfectly. Look at that. And then uh, I don't know how she made them. I just kind of made up my own thing. So, and this is what I used for a measurement today. I used my mat. <laughs> that way I can remember how much to put in a kit. So I've already got these up on my website on under the kits, under the jewelry, or sorry, the um, earring kits. And I called them Carol after Carol Carmen Jewelry because I really did appreciate her coming up with something so beautiful. It's just stunning. At least I think it's beautiful. So I've got two colorways and I'll show them to you. So I'm gonna take my little um, piece of um, wire and I'm gonna leave about three inches on one side and the rest on the other, or you could go half and half, whatever. You know, there is no rule to this one. So now I am going to pop that in to the little um, stitch around. So what I wanna do is get that, our little um, hole centered right underneath there. So now I'm gonna bring this short wire around to the front and just take it right through to the back it's like that. So you can use your tools. I've just been using my fingers, but if you can't grab hold of that, just grab your plier and pull that over. Now, when you're pulling that, make sure that it goes to the left 
of this centerpiece. You don't want it to go off to the wrong side. So now that created a nice little V there and we're not going to worry about this part, it's just going to hang out. So now I want to create a V on the other side. So I'm going to pull this fairly snug to make sure that it's locked in there. So now what I want to do is wrap this around a few times and I'm just doing it nice and neat. If you want a, like a messy wrap you can do that but I wanted a nice neat wrap. So then I'm just going to trim that off and then I'm going to take my pliers and just kind of burnish that wire down a little bit I, like, and I'm just sort of pushing it down. It's not going to go anywhere because it's on there really tight. Now I'm going to take this one so you can see in the back I don't have a V there I only have one half of it so I need to pull it over to that side to create a V and then I'm going to wrap it around and I want to cover up everything so maybe um, go halfway on each side with your wire and then that should give you enough wire on both sides so then I'm going to trim that off making sure that I use the flush side so that I don't have any big burrs sticking up there and then I'm going to take the end of my pliers and I'm going to find the end of that and when I'm burnishing all I'm doing is just kind of pushing that down like it's just kind of like I'm doing this kind of a motion. You just want to make sure it's not popping up and if any wires are just kind of in the wrong place just sort of mold them around. You know when you're working with wire you're the boss of it so just make it do what you want it to do. Alright so then I am going to take my ear wire and run that through again you cannot get much more simple than this and then you're going to do that up okay so here are the carol earrings and uh, again i just think they are so simple but they are so pretty look at look at those are those not the prettiest things you've ever seen so she i think she had a color something like that and then of course we had these lentils too that are green and gold with the picasso on it and so i grabbed the gold to go with it and um, I'm not even a gold person but I in honor of gold I wore some today because um, I have a few pieces in gold but I thought oh my gosh I have to become a gold lover again because I just thought those were so pretty so there you go there's these beautiful earrings that, like like uh, Carol Carmen jewelry made and I will make sure to put a link for Carol uh, for her Instagram page and then here's the bracelets that we made today so there we go. Uh, yes, that metal piece is from Tierra Cast. It is a, um, a small stitch around and we do have those. Um, I can't remember what the uh, code is off the top of my head, but um, we do have, we carry all of this. Um, we have the, the beads with wire we have, and we have a kit. The kits are $10.99 and I just thought they're so, so pretty. So there you go. Yeah, I just see somebody say that um, they like this gold bracelet. So there's um, this is a bracelet that I'll, I'll do a tutorial for. It's just simple ladder stitch. But this one comes from, I think her name was, it was a long time ago. I think her name was um, Aileen or Eileen, I can't remember. And she was a beautiful customer, customer of mine. And uh, she was battling breast cancer. And so she made these all these beautiful bracelets out of um, cutlery and then um, she would sell them at my store and unfortunately she lost her battle with cancer which still to this day makes me choke up i cry every time i'm with you guys <laughs> um, she was a lovely person and thankfully her husband let me know that she had passed she fought very hard but I, every time i wear this i think of her because she was a beautiful person and um, even though i'm not a big gold person i just thought it was so so lovely so that was from her and it just kind of you know paired nicely with this other um, ladder one that I had made so I will do a tutorial for that at some point but there you go all right I'm just gonna switch you guys back so I can uh, say goodbye to you all right whoops I'm stuck on there <laughs> okay how are we doing for time Am I actually on time oh look at that I have a few minutes but I'm the last person of the day today so I can do whatever I want right <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you guys again for um, spending your whole day with us. A lot of you, I'm sure, got up uh, really early and uh, started watching Andrew and went through Candy and Kate and everybody today. So I know it's a it's a lot. It's a lot for everybody. Um, so yeah, okay. So the I forgot to put the the coupon code piece of paper down there, and if I turn it to you now, it'll be backwards. 
So 20% off your order is the coupon code is Tucson, T-U-C-S-O-N, and that will save you 20%. Um, you can place multiple orders. There's no um, limits on how many orders you can place. Just make sure if you place uh, more than one that you put the com in the comments that it's your second order so we'll combine your um, orders because we usually get hundreds of orders over this weekend. It can be a little hectic when we're pulling them all off. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that. Um, also, make sure that you uh, leave a comment somewhere in this video and you tell me your the color that uh, you think of when you think of Tucson and that will get you into a drawing for um, some free kits. I'm going to give those away. If you do place an order, make sure that you put in the bottom that you watched me today and then you were going to go in for a drawing for three $25 um, gift certificates for my online store. And don't forget that Monday is a holiday here, so it will probably be bounced back by a day or so. Um, and make sure that you enter that big draw for um, the, the, all the, the group that we've all donated to. Uh, there's some really good stuff. And we all gave a, um, an amount, I think, uh, so that Candy could tell you guys what it was worth, but I haven't heard, but I think it's worth a lot. So um, I'm just looking at my notes here to see if there's anything else that I need to tell you about. Oh, and I get lots of, I've been getting lots of questions. So I've been doing these mystery boxes and I know that a bunch of you hopped on and grabbed them. Sorry, that light is really making my, <laughs> well. Um, <laughs> so what the mystery boxes are, are just, we're just kind of going around the store and finding fun things and throwing them in there and you get $200 worth of uh, product for $50. So you save, uh, I think it was 75%, something like that. Um, the first group went out and those are ones that I had my staff pull and I'm sure they did a fabulous job but I never saw what was in them and um, it stressed me out terribly because um, I am my business it's me and so um, although I really 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 appreciated them doing it I just thought you know what I have to do them because um, you know I'm tightly wound that way so the next group that went out were all handpicked by me and uh, there was some crazy stuff in there and what some people got and I didn't tell anybody when they when they went out so if you're watching and you got something in there that looked really interesting it was from my personal stash I've traveled all over the world collecting beads for a very long time and I have way too many things so I had um, I, I had beads from my friends Stephanie Dillman and Carrie Fuhr and those are worth like over a hundred and fifty dollars but I didn't put that as part of the, the amount. I just threw them in the box. There was carved things that I got from Phil, one of our um, vendors that travels all over, and he gave me this beautiful hand-carved bell um, that went in there. I have um, beautiful polymer clay beads by the, none other than uh, Christy Friesen. Somebody got one of those. Um, there was all kinds of uh, things that I grabbed my personal stash box, and I was throwing those in there. So when I create the boxes, you guys get some really um, cool things. And so I'm going to continue doing them. Right now, there are none. So if you go to um, my website, so it's www.kellysbeadboutique.com, spell Kelly with an I-E, um, make sure that you go to the top where it says mystery box. Click on it, and if you scroll down, you'll see a little section that says, um, what does it say? Um, something like, remind me when this comes back in stock and then you'll get a notification. Now, you gotta be fast, because the last ones that I put out, um, I think they were literally gone in 10 minutes. It was just crazy. So now I do wanna tell you, um, and this isn't like a ramp, but it's, I have to pay out of pocket on the shipping for those. So you guys have to pay for shipping, but I because they go in a box and I send most of them to the United States, it costs me a lot to ship. So. I really appreciate it when people place that as a secondary order um, just because of the cost. So if I'm adding a whole pile of other stuff to the mystery box, then the shipping was sometimes costing me like $18 and I don't make any money on the mystery boxes. It's just a way to clean out some of the um, stuff that hasn't moved in the store and things like that um, And because so, it's really at my cost. So I do appreciate it when you guys buy those things, but I have to be mindful of the end <laughs> result. So you do get charged shipping on it is what I'm trying to say. Um, but I still have to pay some of it out of pocket, but can I start a list? Uh, no, I can't. I have, I have just so many, I mean, so many thousands of customers and I just can't, I'm really sorry, but you can put your name down on there and then just watch your phones. And if you get an alert, just hop on right away. So 
Yeah, I've got the shipping down to a pretty good, um, you know, I figured it out pretty well. And um, I, I try to keep it as, as it, you know, economical as I can. But they keep raising the rates. Everybody keeps raising them. So I had to raise them up to $12.99 in Canada, which is just ridiculous. But if you buy in Canada and I can get your price lower, then I always refund you the, the money. So if it only costs like $8, I give you back 4 Or if it only costs $2, because sometimes we can get in these little thin boxes. Um, then I will give you back like eight or nine dollars. So, so the Tucson code is working. Um, has anybody else tried? Because I know we've already been receiving lots of orders. How, when you place an order, make sure that you look. It sometimes will say um, that it's not valid, but it will uh, it'll actually give you the discount. But it's also not available on kits. So if you have only kits in your cart, it won't it won't work. It's not available on kits, clearance, or on um one other thing what else was that kids clearance or tools and also um on our big spools of leather because uh, you know they're already at a uh, affordable rate so how am i doing okay well i'm a little bit over here as always but it worked okay good so yeah if you've got kids there it's not it's just kids it's not going to give you a discount on uh, on that so all right, well, that's probably good enough for everybody. I'm sure you've spent your entire day uh, glued to the your phone or the TV or whatever, so, okay. So thank you very much for joining all of us today and especially for joining in on me. I, with me, I really do appreciate each and every one of you and I love all of your support. And um, I get so many lovely um, emails and I get cards and I get um, DMs and all kinds of stuff from everybody and I really do appreciate it. So I will make sure to drop a link down for all my socials. Make sure that you uh, join me on YouTube. I put out a YouTube video pretty much every Monday at 12 o'clock. Um, I won't put out one this week. Um, I'll put this out, <laughs> but I won't put out another one. And um, I'm always on, um, we're on TikTok and we're on Instagram and uh, Twitter and all of the socials. So you can join me there. So go off and have a fabulous night and get ready for tomorrow. There's another uh, lineup of fabulous people and great projects. And thank you again for all your love and support. It means the world to all of us. Um, have a great night and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.